number 72 of the Downtown Podcast. Uh, you will notice that there's someone missing at this table tonight. Dylan can't actually make it this week, so it's just me running the show. So don't be <laughs> So uh, for the community segment, which we're opening with tonight, we have two awesome people. And the first person I'm going to start with is Shilpi. We're welcoming her back from Progression Labs. And she's got some exciting news to share about the fact that there's a third class coming through right now in Progression Labs, right? Yeah, I'm actually not the guest that you want, but we have three new teams that have been welcomed to downtown. <laughs> so we're really excited to have them. Their batch started on Monday, and they'll be here for three months. Awesome. So um, what kind of companies are actually coming through and what are they working on right now? Yeah, so we have all early stage companies. They're pre-seed. They're raising money, working hard, building, finishing up their products. Um, the first team we have is Ling. They're here from New York City and they're working on an immersion language learning app. Um, to supplement kind of education that's happening in school with messaging. Awesome. Um, the second team we have is Leetcoin. They're you know in the Bitcoin space and they're uh, working on a very cool gaming platform that allows people to compete, gamers to work with Bitcoin to make real money from oh, gaming. Nice. Um, and then the third company is actually someone out of the local scene, Brooks Halliday, who's working with Roll Tech, is working on a company called Flight Gear, and they're going to launch this summer. So we're really excited. I love how varied all these companies are, too. Like, I imagine that you're going to get some really cool stuff coming out of this one. Yeah, absolutely. And the common thread is downtown, so they'll all be working out of work in progress. Um, they're living in 8th Street Apartments. Oh, nice. So we encourage all the community members to meet them and connect with them and uh, help support their company's growth. So what sort of things can we do from the outside while they're going through this program to help them do that? Like, should we give them tours or should we invite them to parties? And like, how do we get to know them? All of the above. Anything that you can really introduce them to downtown and what's happening here. Um, I know a lot of them are hiring for developer and design talent. Uh, you can also offer to be beta testers and, you know, use what they're working on. Any feedback for their products would be greatly appreciated. Awesome. And last time we had a bit of a couch surfer at the end of the program, right? He was <laughs> looking for a place to live. So that might possibly happen too again at the end of the... Yeah, who knows? Program. I mean, they're all going to be hiring right now. They're they're stable and have places to stay. So we'll awesome. <laughs> so uh, what's the website? What's the Progression Labs website so people can it's, kind of keep an eye on things? Yeah, it's progressionlabs.com and uh, all of our teams can be found online. It's Ling, Leak coin and flight gear. Awesome. I will be keeping tabs on them and seeing how they go through. And three months, I'm sure, will go so quick. Yeah, they'll be here till September, so let's, let's hope for the best. And we've got to convince them to stay downtown and show them how special it is. Right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Great. So the next person we have on the show is Owen. And Owen is part of an event that's kind of close to my heart. It's called Give Camp. So why don't you tell me about that? And I believe this is the second Give Camp you're running too, right? Yeah, that's right. So. Vegas Give Camp is basically a hackathon for charity. Uh, it's a chance for all of the tech experts in Vegas to do something that really directly benefits and impacts social issue issues in Vegas by helping out and donating their time for local charities. This is such a great idea because I, I feel like sometimes you get caught up in the tech scene and the startup scene and the business and it's all about the grind and everything. But I feel like um, technology people, especially in Las Vegas, have so much to offer outside of that that they can step out and do something like super meaningful that benefits communities outside of what they're used to working with, right? Yeah, it's incredible the amount of energy that is unlocked when you take a technology expert who basically I think has essentially like all the power in the world at their fingertips and then you take their skills and talent and you apply it to the most important social issues today through connecting in person and working with these charities. So there's this amazing synergy, there's a huge amount of uh, just great connections that happen, it's an awesome networking opportunity. Uh, the event itself is pretty kick-ass, we have like free food and drinks and beer all weekend. Uh, there's a lot of like free swag. We've got 32 sponsors last year. Wow. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. It's a pretty huge event. Um, actually, last year we had, let me say some statistics. Okay, okay. So we had last year 17 nonprofits. We had 32 sponsors, as I said, um, 50 tech volunteers. Dude, that's mind blowing. Yeah. And over that weekend of just three days, we raised over $100,000 in free tech services. That is fantastic. So I imagine that that's just going to get even bigger this year, right? We're going to try to make it as big as possible. It's happening at the Innovation Center, so we definitely have plenty of room to expand. And so that is kind of what brings me here today is I really want to get as many tech volunteers and as many nonprofits in Vegas to sign up for this event as possible. So if you are passionate about Vegas, you want to really change the world, you guys have the power to do it. 
You can do it by just, for one, just spreading the word about this event. Another one is if you're a nonprofit, sign up by June 30th, which is next Monday. Even if you don't sign up in time, you can sign up to participate up until uh, the end of July. Uh, same as if you're a tech volunteer, but really the sooner you sign up, the better we're going to be able to partner up the tech teams with the nonprofits to make sure that the things that we do at that event are as effective as possible and actually can get finished in that weekend. This is going to be so amazing. I cannot wait to see this, and I definitely want to come down to it. The only thing is, I don't know what date it is. So when are you planning to hold it at the Innovation Center? Well, that's an awesome question. So <laughs> the event is August 8th to 10th, Okay. and it's going to be the whole weekend. But even if you can only make it for a day or just an hour, like please come. It's going to be the most amazing group of people, people really passionate about making Vegas a better place. You're going to meet awesome sponsors, awesome tech volunteers volunteers and get to learn about all these nonprofits doing amazing stuff in town. Awesome. So if I am a sponsor or a tech volunteer potentially or a nonprofit, how do I get in touch with you to find out more? So the best way to get information is just go to the website which is VegasGiveCamp.org. You can also go to uh, email info at LVGiveCamp.org or you could also email me which is Owen at AllInWebPro.com. So speaking of volunteering, I'm going to get you to do a special favor for me. Oh, sure. I'm all about it. Uh, I'm going to get you to pick the fortune of the week. We are bringing it back. All right. Any uh, fortune cookie There should like. be some like theme music going yeah. on right now. I think we used out. to have that. All right. How about this one? <laughs> that sounds good to me. Can okay. we get our fortune cookie handler, Alan? Okay. This is like the, <laughs> the pass off here. Alan's new to this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, Alan, and thanks to our awesome community members, Sophie and Owen. tonight because unfortunately Dylan can't be with us but he is having way more fun right now at VidCon anyway so um, yeah sucks to be us I guess <laughs> just kidding so I'm super excited to talk about our uh, to talk with our guest tonight so it was almost serendipity that Dylan was not available he is the CEO and co-founder of Tech Cocktail. He brings over 10 years experience um, from the entrepreneurial field to Las Vegas and the community. Um, he found something very interesting to do on his honeymoon when it all of a sudden started raining, <laughs> which was always a bit of a killjoy. Um, please put your hands together for Frank Gruber. here tonight because he kind of went above and beyond just all of the stuff that he does every day. He actually wrote a book called Startup Mixology, which is really awesome and it's, it's got a bit of a twist compared to other startup books. So why don't you tell me exactly what Startup Mixology is about? Well, first off, thank you for having me. This is great. I, I just looked back. I was on episode four. Yes, you were. And it's great to be back on episode <laughs> 72. You guys are doing great. So thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I've been busy. I wrote, I wrote a book. This is a, the physical copy and I, I just got it yesterday. So <laughs> you must be really I'm, excited. Yeah, I've been sleeping with it. It's uh, <laughs> Oh, don't tell anyone that. Oh, is this live? Is this yeah, live? Yeah, oh, maybe okay. we can edit that out. Okay, we can edit that. Yeah, no. Uh, but no, it's 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 um, you know, it took me like you mentioned a while to, to to start up, and I worked at a lot of big companies, and um, this book is really all about you know all the different things that go into starting and running a business. So it's literally like every element or ingredient, and using stories from companies like Zappos and Uber and Grubhub and Sweetgreen and, and WordPress and sharing their stories and trying to illustrate a different point about how to, how to do a certain element. So, um, you know, I wanted to be able to try to help people that are trying to that have an idea. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of people come to us and they're like, oh, we really love what you're doing. I have an idea. And I'm like, really? And, you know, I get a lot of the same questions over and over again. Mm -hmm. and, after a while, you know, I try to re, you know be as helpful as possible. But uh, I was interviewing Jason Freed last w winter, and I was like, "Listen, you know, wh what do you do? You get a lot of people come to you with questions and stuff." And he said, "You know what you should do is like, if someone asks you something more than eight times, you should put put it in a book and sell it." 
So we did. I really, I really like that advice. Yeah. I feel like yeah. that means yeah. I need to write a book on 3D printing or yeah. something. Right, exactly. But I mean, really, to be honest, it's about helping people get, get somewhere faster. And a lot of people have ideas. And I want to be able to put this in the hands of any in, uh, entrepreneur that has ideas, somebody who wants to start up, as well as entrepreneurs that are trying to innovate within a big company. I worked mm -hmm. at AOL for a long time and Tribune for a long time. And mm -hmm. working inside that environment, um, it's, you know, in some cases, you're, you're in a style that's similar to a startup. And trying to innovate and push things out is, is mm -hmm. really hard so absolutely so looking for ways to kind of help in that that direction too awesome so you could almost call it like a recipe book it is, yeah it is it is okay. a recipe book for trying to you know start and run a business successfully and uh, I guess the interesting thing is it doesn't have um, physical you know hey put this this ingredient or whatever it's yeah, more what broad but book different? yeah so every chapter is um, you know lead story about a company that in, in kind of illustrating you know how to get funding or how to be bootstrap or how to come up with ideas or how to market or whatever and then it talks about the harsh realities of that that ingredient so whether you know there's a lot of people who have done this and they've you know they've run into things and it, I think part of the book is that you know, the differentiator in the book is that you know you hear a lot about the companies that have been out there for nine or ten years and you really only hear about the success at the end so right, like the IPO right. or this exit Absolutely. or whatever and then they're humongous and the first seven to eight or maybe first five or whatever are really hard and you don't necessarily hear about that and I think it's important if you're going to start up or run a business it, that you understand that component of it that it's not going to be just sunshine shine, rainbows and unicorns the whole time <laughs> and there it will be hard and I think um, in general um, it's been glamorized and so I want to make sure that mm. people realize that in each element this is what you can do to kind of these are going to things you might run into and then how do you get out of that you know how, so this interesting thing is that so we talk about the harsh realities and then we talk about celebration as an opportunity to motivate and propel you kind of out of those those situations so I know that sounds really weird because you're probably thinking like celebration like yeah what does I that find, mean I find in the startup industry <laughs> yeah. people People are kind of obsessed with failure right now and the things right. that can teach you and the way that yeah. it can make you more successful. But you actually believe the opposite. Well, you don't. You, you obviously value that, but yeah. you also think that there's something in celebrating their successes, right? Yeah. Well, it, it's actually talking about you know celebration as a motivational tool. So mm -hmm. using it to propel you out of those those lows because you're going to be up and down, and it could be up and down the same day. You know, you don't know. Every day is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But um, you want you want to get out of that valley. And you, how do you get out of that? You need to create these mo momentum events that help you push through. So it's, anything is simple as like you know a sales bell if you're trying to sell more stuff because that's going to motivate your team and want right. anybody's going to want to ring yeah. that bell yeah, that's to, to to you know more um i guess uh we took a, you know at the end of our first year bootstrap or you know bootstrapping uh and doing this full time, we took a workcation. It was kind of like a celebration of, oh my gosh, we survived. You know, like we <laughs> yeah, did it. That's really important. And, but I mean, we still that. worked. You know, mm -hmm. we worked the whole time. But the idea of actually doing that somewhere that was beautiful and you could actually be on your own, you know, have the flexibility and the freedom to do this is um, it was something we were kind of acknowledging. Absolutely, so, that's yeah. really important. Definitely. So there's, I mean, there's a chapter on failure. That's a big part of it. Of there, course. You know, there's a ch chapter on success too. And you know, I think fail the reason that the, fail the failure chapter is actually a really good chapter because there there are a lot of people that that don't necessarily have the same risk tolerance for for startups and don't necessarily know that failure is part of that and right, I think it's important yeah. that so some people might give up thinking that okay this is the first sign of difficulty this is obviously failure looming and right. I need to stop and well, you're saying like well if you, you learn from you it yeah to, if you if you learn from it then it's not it's not a big deal and then keep going right and like you're, just find your yeah place. maybe it's not that that company maybe it's something else mm -hmm. I talk about some failures I've had like in the book I, I, st great. I started a company um, that was actually a social network and it was basically before Facebook, and it was about connecting college campuses and selling stuff like e-commerce for, for on the college campus. Didn't quite work out yet, but it wasn't because of the idea. The idea was a good idea. It was actually more about the team. So I tell, I tell mm -hmm. the lesson about mm -hmm. how I pulled that team together and you know learned a lot from that. You There's know? some really good yeah. stuff in this book. Oh, thank nice you. Book. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited about it. It's, uh, it comes out July 8th, but you can order it now. Um, if you go to tech.co slash book, you can get it and we'll you know, obviously give you some ex extra content. This is uh, 60,000 words right in here. Wow. And uh, I wrote 100,000, so there's extra chapters. There's like the lost chapters. Yeah, so you, got, you had to kill some stuff. And <laughs> yeah. there was one particular chapter that yeah. I wanted to ask you about. Because, yeah. And it starts with C. Yeah. And you, not that kind of C. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you had to take it out. But it's actually really important and integral to yeah. tech cocktail and everything, it was, a, right? it was a tough call. I mean, editing in general was a tough call. Because mm -hmm. like, there were so many stories that I wanted to include. And people that I wanted to include and things I want to talk about but you have to get it down to a certain word count and one of the chapters that I wanted in there was actually community community right, right. so I, I feel like we what we do every day with tech cocktail is you know try to better, better tell the stories of different communities and do you know hyper local news coverage and events right, and right. 
uh, and bubble the best stuff nationally. And unfortunately, you know, if you're starting a company, the ingredient of community is important, but it's not like, oh, I'm just, it's not ac as actionable. I mean, you, sh you can do things like this and come out and meet people and be a part of it. Uh, but it's not like, oh, this is the, you know, the thing that's right. going to make it happen. So we actually integrated all those different lessons into all the different chapters. I saw that. You've yeah. managed to sneak in a few like local Las Vegas celebrities right. there, and, oh, such as Sarah Evans yeah. and a couple of other people. Right? Yeah, so we do call outs. I think part of this is like if you're not in our industry and you're trying to get into you know, starting and running a business or, you know, you can pick up this book and you can find out some of the key players in there too that are mm -hmm. in the industry. And so we do these like what we call sidebars and we talk about companies and, and people and, and things that you should know about. And just to kind of help jumpstart you, so you don't mm -hmm. have to go and learn it on your own. You're like, oh, these people are, you know, I, should, I can learn from these and follow that path and mm -hmm. find out other people and interesting things that are, are happening. So this is super valuable, and I love also that you, because you are Las Vegas, this is Las Vegas contributing back our lessons and knowledge back to the startup community right. worldwide as well, right? So yeah. So there's, yeah, you're, you're going to recognize a lot of people in the book. Awesome. You know, like, <laughs> um, definitely, uh, you know, there's a whole chapter on culture. So obviously Zappos downtown project. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's some, you know, obviously throughout community. So Vegas Tech Fund and their approach to, to funding is awesome. in the, is in there. Um, and then just people that are had shared their ideas. We actually did a, a call out on, the, on our site through through social media and everything else to say, hey, if you've got stories that are harsh realities about this chapter or this topic, let us know. And we took in hundreds of them, you know, and then we had to vet through all of them and put them into mm -hmm. the different chapters. And and so there's a lot of people that have shared knowledge and, and have contributed to the book. So. Sounds like very refreshingly frank yeah. advice. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> Sorry, I had to it's get It's totally that. frank. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Uh, 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 <laughs> so um, enough about the book. What yeah. I want to know is the personal story behind, like, what was it actually like writing a book? Because this is the first book you've written, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and it, it was a journey even to write the book. I mean, I started talking about writing a book uh, back in 2008. Wow, um, okay. So I, I had, I, yeah, so it's been going on a while. I, mm -hmm. was that, then it was going to be about, I was blogging a lot about Web 2.0 and covering the space, and at the time writing for TechCrunch and a bunch of other places, and uh, decided that, you know, I actually got connected with Brian Solis, who's okay. actually written now four or five books. But it was, it was his first, it was going to be his first book, and it was going to be my first book, and it was going to be about Web 2.0. Didn't work out, timing was wrong, and we would have launched it, and Web 2.0 would have been over. Probably not a good idea, so no, we didn't do not it. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so we waited. Pivoted, yeah. So we pivoted, and we <laughs> waited, and then you know it, you know kept thinking about different ideas, and eventually right. this came through. And I mean, I pitched this idea four years ago, and it wasn't the right time, and it wasn't the right pitch. And then I obviously they reconnected with me a couple like last summer, last August, and uh, we signed the deal, did it, and then I we did our big conference, which is Celebrate here in Vegas in October. I got married in November, and then I started writing the book, <laughs> and so and it was due in January. So I. Um, I didn't. I had, to, I had to take a little bit of an extension, but uh, my honeymoon was in there too. Um, there's a lot of stuff that so you happened. You were writing the book on your honeymoon, right? Let me get this straight. Okay. Yeah. Like, well, I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like secretly, you know, on my phone or whatever. But no, um, there were some rainy days. Actually, in the book, one of the acknowledgments is to is to Kauai. This, we went to Kauai for a honeymoon for a couple of weeks, and uh, there were some rainy days in you know December. I mean, in January, and February, it's usually rainy there. But right, right. I was able to use those rainy, rainy days to like finish stuff. And yeah, I mean, I'm thankful for that opportunity. It was a beautiful place to be able to share uh, that experience. So this is awesome. There's a, there's a lot of you personally in this book. And there is, I yeah. Think that that's going to come out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it starts with, uh, you know, I wanted to create a groundwork. I mean, I wrote it the first three chapters to begin with. I sent them to Sh Tony Shea, and he said, you need a story. <laughs> <laughs> and there was no story. I mean, it was like, it was very like, do this next, and that's what you do. You know, it was robotic, and I didn't, I didn't like it either. Right, and right. I thought that, and Tony thought that, and well, my other great. readers thought it. And I was yeah. like, you know what? We got to restart, start over. So started telling the story of like how I got where I was, and then shared that, and then ultimately shared a lot of other people's it stories. All organically came yeah, together. Yeah, it all came together. Well, yeah. awesome. Congratulations. And, and I didn't do it alone though. I had help. Okay. I, I definitely had the help of um, some of my team members. Um, Kira Newman actually was a big part of it. She is one of our senior writers. She helped. Do a lot of research, a lot of behind the scenes stuff mm, that mm -hmm. you know I actually acknowledge in the book too, because I wouldn't have been able to do it without just her. Just all the bits and pieces. Well, that just say. helping me sound like a coherent human being. Um, <laughs> you know. when you're doing the late right, 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 exactly. Because I mean, it was a lot of brain dumps, like right. a lot of like, oh my gosh, it happened like eight years ago. What was that? And then like turning into a better story and um, making it fit in the right place, awesome. and and then also just vetting through like all the stuff that I wrote, you know. Well, I definitely think yeah. it was worth all the hard work. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, I you. definitely encourage everyone to check out yeah. his book. It's yeah. coming out super soon. He's yes. really excited to have some oh, more copies. Yeah, so it's, it's coming out July 8th. You can actually, mm -hmm. if you wanted to, get it on digital right now. Oh, That's the secret. I do have it on my Kindle. Yeah, so Kindle, I, there, I books everywhere. So awesome. thank you and so much. So please join me in congratulating Frank Gruber. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I, I have to do one more thing, though. Okay. I have to thank my wife. She helped me, too. 
she's a big part of Tech Cocktail, Jen Consalvo. She's our COO. And she was on that honeymoon with me that yeah. allowed me to write. <laughs> awesome. And I'm alive. So well, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. I forgot to thank my wife before. <laughs> That's problematic. I had to do it. Sorry? I hope that works out. No, it'll be okay. okay. We, can fix, we can make that work. Okay. We're ups and downs, we gather round and sing the drinking song. Toast to those we love the most, the place where we belong. Thank you. and myself who is uh, drinking a free beer right now. You have a very awesome man to thank for that and that is Jimmy Jacobson from Wedgies.com. So thank you, another hand for him please. <laughs> awesome, so you don't get to talk to the ever effervescent Miller tonight because he also couldn't be on the show tonight. So I do apologize, but I'm gonna do my best, okay? So this week, it is National Cephalopod Week. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and cephalopods are things like an octopus or just like, you know, deep sea creatures. And uh, I have no way to relate that back to wedgies, but I'm going to let Jimmy have a turn at doing that. So uh, That's great. Uh, my favorite cephalopod is the Nautilus. And they actually date back to the Precambrian era which was the dawn of the dinosaurs, and our logo is a dinosaur eating a donut. <laughs> and your favorite color is, no, I'm kidding, that's not part of the trick. I promise this is not scripted, like he actually had this ready, like somehow ready in the back of his mind within like that, so awesome, awesome. So I've been getting Wedgie's emails because I am signed up to your mailing list on mm -hmm. two separate email addresses, by the way, I'm super Excellent. Fan. What's been happening in the world of wedges? Because there's been a lot of new stuff you guys have been rolling out, right? Yeah, that's a great, great question, Susan. I'm really glad you asked that. Uh, have you noticed the animated GIFs at the top? Yes. Of, okay. they are, I, I'm actually, so I've been saving this question for you. Where do you find them? Because mm -hmm. I see a lot of GIFs on Twitter and on Tumblr, and every time you guys put a GIF in your, you seriously need to sign up for the mailing list, guys. Every time I see a GIF, I've never seen it before, and it's hilarious. We find them on the internet. So I'm not looking in the right places. <laughs> so I'm clearly not looking in the right places, but you are providing some value there. People get to see really cool stuff they haven't seen before. But what kind of content have you been rolling out to people? Uh, so the GIFs are a great example of the mm -hmm. content we've been rolling out. We actually have animated GIF support inside of Wedgies now. It's very, so very cool. you can create a poll, and instead of adding just an image of something plain and static, you can add one of those great GIFs. <clears throat> GIFs that we've been rolling out. I uh, like gifts. We can, we can have a little punch up about it if well, you want. Well, we can have a punch off, or maybe we can make a wedgie, or. I think we need to make a wedgie on this. Yep. Who, hands up, who says gif? Oh, apparently that's the correct term. Who says gif? It's a gif. Yeah, it's, it's a, a gif. gif. Yeah. All right, I, it. okay. I have another question. Who says, who says giraffe? <laughs> Nobody in the audience. All right. Okay. Who says GitHub? <laughs> <laughs> Porter's favorite drink is gin. <laughs> what about what about some good old gin? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So apart from gifts, what else has been coming out? There's been some cool embeddable stuff now. Yep. So uh, we have a super easy way to put polls on your websites now. In I fact, love that. I've got a good one right here that uh, the website Engadget has been using wedgies, oh. and they've got a very topical question, which was today, or yesterday, Google I.O., they released uh, the new version of Android, which is the letter L. And so Engadget asked their readers using a wedgie what the L stands for. So here are the options, and I'd love to hear what you think. Okay. All right, so our options are Ladybug, Luscious, Lockjaw, Life Saver, Larkspur, Lettuce, Lollipop, or Larry? 
What was the first one? I think I picked that one. First one was Ladybug. Ladybug. I like that one. It's a good one. How many votes? Uh, it, this has 19,345 wow. votes on it. And Ladybug got 4%. Lollipop has a massive 78%. Keeping in theme with the candy good releases point. of, of Android point. releases. So what, what's your guess? Uh, my guess was Love, which isn't even on oh. here. <laughs> Nobody cares about love anymore. We, we love you though, and thank you. we love you especially because you sponsored the beer tonight. So thank you, <laughs> and give it up for Jimmy Jackson for my thank you very much. <laughs>